Hey guys, I'm Justin Smith. I am the lead pastor of New City Church. I just want to talk to you a little bit about preaching to today's generation. Many of you are collegiate ministry leaders, and you're wondering, how do we preach in a world that is post-Christian, post-truth, post-authority, all of those things? And so I just hopefully we can uh, help you out just a little bit um, in this short time. In Acts 2, Peter preaches a sermon and he, he outlines how the Old Testament was always pointing to Jesus and how Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead for the forgiveness of our sins. And he, he, he does it in such a way that the crowds listening to him, they, they, they can't help but shout back at him, well, what then do we do? And that's, that's our goal in preaching is we want to create some sort of tension. We want to create some sort of conflict where people can't help but either literally or metaphorically, like raise up from their seats and say, like, what, what do I do with this? What I, I need to do something. What do I do? Here's how I think we can do that in today's world. We live in a post-Christian and post-truth culture. Even if you find yourself in the Bible Belt, if you work on a college campus, that's a different kind of place than the town that surrounds it. Most college campuses in our country are post-Christian. And so just saying the Bible says so doesn't communicate like it did maybe for previous generations. We've got to be able to tell the story of Scripture by telling and preaching to several other stories. And those stories are the culture, so the stories in general, the stories that the world believes, the stories that your people are just swimming in day in and day out, their stories, the, the experience of the people that are under your shepherding and under your care, and uh, your story. People need to know who you are, and, and authenticity is a massive value in our culture right now. And then that's when you get to preach the story, when you get to preach Christ crucified, as Paul says. Let's talk really briefly about um, all four of those. The stories. Whether your college students, whether the people you preach to on a regular basis believe this stuff or not, it's the water that they are swimming in. Cultural stories. What are the things that your people are watching on YouTube? What are the truths that are being told to them through social media? What are the general, generally accepted plausibility structures, as Leslie Newbigin calls them? What are just the things that people just assume and take for granted in our culture that might actually be bad news, not good news? You need to be able to speak that language and also to be able to preach to it and, and, and to challenge those stories. And then the, the second one is to preach to their stories. So they've got the whole cultural narratives and stuff, but they also are coming from individual places. God has taken them through different experience in their lives. There's been different influence in their lives. All of them had different experiences with the Bible, if any experience with the Bible, and with church and Christianity, all of that stuff. And so you need to know your people. There's no room, I think, for green room preachers. We need to be able to smell like our sheep. We need to be able to be in their lives and to know where they are coming from so we can speak directly to them. And then your story. People really do actually care about your story. And one of the things that people really care about right now is trusting the person who's speaking to them. Like I said, we're in a post-authority, post-truth culture. And so one of the things that is going to um, convince someone to listen to you, to that, that, that you have something to say, that you might have something to offer, they're not going to just trust that because you have a title or because you have a leather Bible open on the pulpit or the music stand or whatever it is that you're preaching from. That doesn't communicate now. What communicates is, hey, this is how this thing that we're talking about has affected me. These are the mistakes that I've made that I bet you've made as well. These are the ways that I have seen growth in myself. You never want to make yourself the hero. It's not about you. Jesus is the hero. It's about him. But people need to know where you are coming from as well. And then the last thing is we want to preach the story. This is a very biblically illiterate day and age. And so preaching now is not just staying in a text and giving a few principles from it. People need to know the whole story of Scripture in every sermon or every talk that you give. And that's going to be a daunting task. But what I really mean is that you need to preach 
Christocentrally. You need to be able to take whatever it is that you're talking about, the subject, the stories, the questions that your people are dealing with, and you need to be able to get them from there to why Jesus is the answer to those questions, why Jesus is the fulfillment to those stories, or why Jesus is the better story, the truer story, uh, opposed to the stories that they um, they believe. And if we can do that, if we can tell those stories, if we can preach to those stories, then I think we will reach a generation that desperately needs that better story, the good news of Jesus Christ.